All right, so today you're starting a new lesson and don't write any of this yet until um, we actually start the note. So what you guys are gonna go over today is just some of these basic properties of exponents. Now the unit isn't on exponents, um, it's on different kinds of sequences and series, but the first lesson um, that has to do with a little bit of using exponents, so I'll go over that. Okay, I'm gonna quickly go through these and don't write these down, um, and they are on page 696 in your book if you need them. You already know that x, so this is gonna be the product rule. You don't have to know the name of it, but you definitely have to know how to use it, so product rule. So this says that you're going to just multiply, add the exponents. And again, why? Because you really have two x's here, three x's here, and so this is gonna give you x to the fifth. So this is a power of a power rule, and this, your answer is gonna be x to the sixth. The reason for that is you're going to multiply the exponents, and this really means you have x squared three times, and x squared is xx, xx. Okay, so in total you have six of them. Again, we don't do this part because you go straight to the rule. So this is a multiplication problem, but you're really adding the exponents. This is a multiplication problem, and you are adding, or and you are multiplying the exponents. So just make sure you're careful with that. This one, when you're dividing, you actually subtract the exponents. This also means that you have eight x's here. Three on the bottom. Three cancel and you're left with x to the fifth. The other way, you're still gonna do the same exact thing. Subtract your exponents. Your answer is x to the negative five. That would actually be marked wrong. You are not allowed to have negative exponents, so you have to simplify this. Now this actually goes to another rule. I don't know if you guys remember that. The rule says that that is actually the reciprocal. So this is now x to the fifth, bump to the bottom, make your exponent positive, and it's one. Okay. And again, the idea behind that is you have three x's on top, eight x's on the bottom, three cancel, so you're left with five x's on the bottom. Okay. The next rule that you guys are going to do is x to the 3 eighths. Now, do you guys remember what that changes into? All right, well, anyways, so that's what we're gonna take, uh, do some problems on and learn a little bit about. Okay, so the rule that you are going to have to write this down, section 11.1, .1, and it's in on exponents, is a to the m over n, is the same as okay that's how I write it you actually could also write it as um, a to the m power and then take the nth root of it so these are actually the same but this usually ends up being simplified a little bit faster this is called Rational exponents. Rational is a fancy word for fraction. So here we have um, written in with rational exponents. And here you have it written in radical notation using radicals. A couple of quick um, vocabulary words that you should know. Let me write this again. Okay, some good vocabulary for you is going to be this. Write this down. Five, third root of seven. So in this case, this entire thing is the radical. The number under the um, radical sign is your radicand. This is your coefficient of your radical. And then this number right here is called your index number. Now, if there is no number written, then it's an implied two. So that would be the square root of seven, and you guys know that. So if there is no number written, 
It's an implied two. Okay. All right, before we continue our lesson, I just wanna make sure we're uh, clear on something. So some quick review. What is the square root of 25? Right, and the reason you know that is because you can break it apart and there's two groups of five. So square root of 25 is five. What's the square root of 20? Two root five, right? Great. Well, suppose you didn't know how to do this. You could also do a factor tree and you could break it apart into four times five, two times two. So it's two root five. But again, um, this is the fastest way to do it is finding your greatest perfect square. What's the square root of 40? Same thing, square root of four, square root of 10, two root 10. If you didn't know that, you could do a factor tree. So you're looking for pairs. So it's two, five and two don't have a pair. So it stays under your square root. So your answer is two root 10. So now let's say we didn't have square roots and we did third roots. Well, what's the third root of 27? Third root of 27 is just three because three times three times three is 27. Or if you did a factor tree, nine times three, three times three. Again, you're looking for groups of three. Okay, let me go like this. All right, what about the third root of 16. Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna try the greatest perfect cube that's in 16. And I'm gonna post this so that you guys can see. So what's the greatest perfect, not square, but cube? So you're looking for these. What's the greatest perfect cube that um, goes into 16? All right, so obviously it is eight. Eight times two is 16, so third root of eight times third root of two, well, third root of eight is two, and that just stays. So this is your answer. Now, if you didn't know that, you're gonna do the same thing and just make a factor tree. You could have done eight times two, four and four, doesn't really matter as long as you break it apart. So once you have it down here, because it's the third root, you're looking for groups of three. So that comes outside of your third root. And then this number stays under the third root. And the only thing that you have to remember is that it's not a square root, it was a third root. So make sure to write the correct index number there. Okay. All right, and add one more thing to your notes. Five to the three sevenths. This is going to be the same thing if I wrote it, um, from rationals to, or from radicals back into rationals. So you can switch things. You can either write it um, with a rational or with radicals. Like you can write something as a fraction or as a decimal and vice versa. If I wrote this back the other way, this is gonna be five, seven, to what power? Well, seven has the power of one, so this is actually seven to the one third. Okay, all right, so now we're actually gonna do some problems and um, we're gonna use all of the rules. Now the problems are kind of quick, but um, that does not make them easy. All right, so let's go ahead, take a minute to copy these down or copy them as we go. So the first problem says five to the negative four. All right, so what are we gonna do with negative exponents? Well, negative exponents get bumped on the bottom. So it's one over five to the fourth. Okay, when you move it, you make your exponent positive. That's it. If you wanted to simplify it, you have this. Five to the fourth power, looking at the table, is going to be 625. Okay, either one is fine. So in this case, 
Um, you can do it two ways. You can distribute the negative two to everything or you can just flip it right away. Um, I'll show you both ways. So this one, what you're gonna do is nine to the negative two, 16 to the negative two. Well, we're not allowed to have negative exponents. So what does that mean? You move this to the bottom, make the exponent positive. Move this to the top, make the exponent positive. If you had done it the other way, you would have flipped it right away. 16 over nine made your exponent positive and you would have ended up with 16 squared, nine squared. Again, you should probably go ahead and simplify this. Okay, so I look at my table to try to see what this is. Well, 16 squared is not here, so I have to use a calculator, or if you know that, so that's gonna be 256, nine squared, you know that. You can either leave it this way or this way, okay? All right, this one. So this one we're gonna change from um, rational exponents to radical, so this is 216 is here. This number is now your index number, three, and it's raised to the first power. All right, so now I'm gonna have to look for the third root of 216. So um, I look here just to see if it's even, oh, okay, it turns out that the third root of 216 is six. And again, the way this table works, like this would be, two to the sixth power, but if you look down, this is the fourth root of these numbers, the fifth root of these numbers, the sixth root of these numbers. Okay, so the third root of 216 is six, that was nice. Okay, so this next one, 27 to the one half times three to the one half. Well, in this case, um, you can't add your exponents because they're not the same base. So I'm gonna rewrite it. What does 27 to the 1 half mean? Oh, that really means it's a square root of 27 times the square root of 3. Now you could multiply these together and simplify it that way and say, oh, okay, it's a square root of 81, which is 9. Unfortunately, I don't usually multiply numbers. I always break my numbers down. So I'm just going to do that this way. So 27 is the same thing as 9 times 3, 3 times 3. And so because it's a square root, I'm looking for groups of two. So I have a three that comes out of the square root, another three that comes out of the square root. So three times three, my answer is nine. Oh, you guys can't see. Okay, so I broke this apart, um, two threes. So one of them comes out, another pair of threes. So that comes out, so your answer is nine. Now, had you not done that, you could have just said, well, square root of 27 times square root of 3, 27 times 3, square root of 81. Oh, I know square root of 81. It's 9. Okay, so lots of times there's lots of different ways to do them. As long as you get the same answer, then you're good. All right, so this one, what I'm going to do is definitely distribute the 3 to everything. Okay, so now I'm looking at this. 3 cubed and another 3 is three to the fourth power. A to the negative six and A to the fifth, you're gonna add the exponent, so it's A to the negative one. This looks pretty good, except for you're not allowed to have negative exponents. So this now becomes, well, I'll just write it under here. Three to the fourth over A to the positive one, okay? And you can leave your answer this way, or if you know what three to the fourth power is, it's 81. All right, this next problem, this is a really good one. So what I'm gonna do, because it's all under the square root, I'm gonna say this is m to the seventh and n to the seventh. I'm just adding the exponents, so I'm putting them all together. So now I have to take the square root. Well, if I were to do it the long way, and I'll do this one three different ways, um, so just bear with me. Okay, there's seven m's. I'm looking for square roots, so things that are pairs. So I know one m comes out, another m comes out, and another m comes out. So it's m cubed outside of the square root, 
and 1m inside the square root. It's n to the seventh, so it's going to be the same thing. n cubed, n. All right. So what's another way to do it? Sometimes they can say, well, look, let's just change this from rational to, um, or from radical to rational. So you can actually rewrite this as m to the 7 halves, n to the 7 halves, because this is really an implied 2 right there. Okay, well, 2 goes into 7 three times, and there's 1 left over. That 1 left over stays under the square root. Same thing, 2 goes into 7 three times, 1 left over, oops, three times. This is definitely going to be the fastest way, but this is if you were to draw it out um, what you're doing, the math behind that. Okay, before we go on with the next part, I just kind of want to show you this problem right here. The square root of um, number 49, okay? So the way I would do it is I would say, oh, okay, this is the same thing as m to the 6 halves n to the 1 half, because there is an implied 2 right there, right? So this is going to simplify m cubed n to the 1 half. Okay, and that's how I would write their an my answer. Notice that they do an absolute value. They're going to do an absolute value when it's an even power root to show that you have to have the positive of it. So same thing here, um, problem 50. I would have just said it's x to the 1 half and y to the um, 3 over 2, but they're showing that because it's an even power, you have to do the absolute value. Um, if you don't write for the um, odd, odd index, you don't need that. Um, if you include it or don't include it, that's fine for, for me. Okay, but I just want you guys to be aware of that. Okay, and our last problem is going to be solving equations with rational exponents. So for these types of problems, um, you are going to solve it in the same exact way you would solve any equation, isolate your x. So the very first thing you want to do, correct, is get rid of that 5. And you're solving for x. So how do you cancel an x raised to the 3 fourths? Oh, you're going to raise it to the 4 thirds power, the reciprocal of that, right? Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. So this cancels, so you're left with x. Okay, well, what is 729 to the 4 thirds? I am not sure. So we're going to have to rewrite this. Change it from rationals to radicals. This is the same thing as... That's your index number. This becomes your exponent. So I'm going to go back to my table and see if there is a third root of 729. Okay, 729, the third root of 729 is 9. So third root of 729 is 9. Go back to my table. What is 9 to the fourth power? 9 to the fourth power is 6,500, oh, you guys can't see. Nine to the fourth power is 6,561, or use your calculator. Okay, oh, and that's it. Okay, so for problems like these, you're gonna isolate your variable, and then to cancel this, you're going to raise it to the rational exponent.